Hey guys, I'm Lauren Douglas. I'm the SVP of Marketing at Channel Factory. I'm joined today by Jenny Blake, who is the author of an amazing book called Free Time. Jenny and I actually met on the plane on the way to South by Southwest, so I'm super excited to have you on to talk about your book and to just meet you in general. Yay, thank you so much. Well, there's a chapter, Serendipity Popcorn, so that is serendipity at its finest. I love that. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, um, Jenny, you wrote a book called Free yes. Time all about how to make more space in your life, more time, um, how to think more, like, more thoughtfully about segmenting your time. Um, and what, what, were you, what was the goal of this? Yeah, for me, I've been self-employed for 11 years now. In fact, yesterday at South By, that was my first day after leaving Google, was on a plane to South by Southwest 2011. Really? Yeah, so oh it's God. kind of it's been a full circle moment. Wow. I'm both working in the fast pace of a corporate environment at a fast growing company like mm -hmm. Google is so intense, but then it's every bit as intense being self-employed. Yes. And what happens is a lot of people get burnt out, they leave corporate, they think they're gonna have all this time and freedom being their own boss, <laughs> right. and then they realize they are their own worst boss. Right. Because that same what I call the inner time blueprint mm -hmm. that a lot of us picked up as children mm -hmm. from society and our families. Yeah. You just take it wherever you go. Yes. So I had to realize that if I didn't want to continue this cycle of burnout, crash, recover, mm -hmm. I needed better systems and better okay. strategies. So that's what the book is about. It's okay. specific practical strategies to free our mind, time, and team to do more of our best work. Okay. So partly free time, sure, it can be like gallivanting at a conference. Yeah. But I also think that so many of us, none of us want to be buried in busy work. Yeah. And mired in minutia and mm -hmm. just the, the stuff that piles up that is draining, mm -hmm. that we dread. So it's also free time. I mean it as a verb. How do we continually free our time? Yes to do the stuff that we really love, like sitting here doing this yeah, right now. Yeah, I love that. I um, Somebody said something to me the other day, which is simple, but it was really powerful, which is um, use your nose to protect your yeses. Mm. And I think that's kind of like that, you know, sort of in that same vein of like making sure that you know that you're thoughtful about how you're using your time so that you can be excited and have fun and play and have that freedom yeah. when you want it. I know because th I think we all have so much going on and yes. so many inboxes even. Email, text messages, every social media platform comes with it, a whole new inbox. I know. Who can keep up? No. And I love what Liz Gilbert said. She said that she treats incoming requests like somebody just entering her home uninvited. <laughs> because I think, I don't know, I struggle with people pleasing yes. and I feel guilty. Yes. And I think so often we say yes to things mm -hmm. out of obligation mm -hmm. or that we should. Mm -hmm. But then that saying, we write a check our body can't cash. Yes. And so I love Liz Gilbert's framing of this person just entered my house unannounced. I don't owe them a response or I don't owe them a yes. yes. And that, um, Another author, Greg McCown, he wrote a book called Effortless mm -hmm. and Essentialism. Every no is casting a vote, like you said, for yeah. something that we do want. And it's yes. so important. We just, there just isn't enough time, like not to have a scarcity mindset about it, but there just isn't enough time to say yes no, to all the inbounds. I know. I know. Well, one of the things that actually Brad, our producer and I, have, we both love Liz Gilbert as well. Um, and one of the things she says is like, well, do you watch, you don't have enough time? Like, do you watch The Sopranos? Um, you have enough time for that. So, like, do you not have? How do you right. make? How do you make time for the things you actually want to accomplish? You know what's funny? I love, I love TV. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> like your previous interview was with, or at least in the day. Who knows when they'll air? But um, we were talking. You, you guys were talking about the importance of entertainment. Yes. And I think she said entertainment is a fundamental human need, yes. which I was like, I love that. I've never heard it. Everyone's always. Throwing TV under the bus, yes. like, oh, we're all wasting our time, frittering it away. I think TV, the way it's done now, yes. the quality and the production value that goes into all these bingeable shows sure. is very exciting. And I, so I find it really inspiring. And it's kind of one of my favorite things to do to unwind. Yeah. So my question is, if, if we're taking time, like... I don't know about you, but I'm so exhausted by the end of the day, the evening. I'm not going to write a novel no, after no, dinner. <laughs> no, I agree. So my question is, like, when is your best energy in a yes. given day? And how do we protect that at all costs? Yes. And for that, me, it's different than the TV time. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, does, and that I assume varies for every person. So 
part of, I assume your thesis is like yeah. finding the things that the way you work best and leaning into that. If you're best in the morning or if you're best at night or if you're best after a workout or whatever it might be, um, finding that the way that you can be the most productive and then leaning into it. Yeah, definitely. Like, and also taking stock of the, the primary diagnostic in the book is noticing where are you in friction, where are you in flow. Yeah. And anywhere you're in friction is an invitation Yes. to problem solve and yeah. think differently. Yes. And so the, the book revolves around the free time framework, mm -hmm. align, design, assign. So first, we, we can, you could even do an audit of your calendar or of your to-do list. Is the work you're doing, are the meetings that you're having, is it aligned mm -hmm. with your energy, mm -hmm. with your strengths, with your mm -hmm. values? And not everything's going to pass even that first test. Right. So by the time we get to design, and like you said, time blocking and batching similar things together. Yeah. That's where I think we could also be more intentional. Even just putting a block on calendar that's do not schedule, that recurs. Oh, that yeah. That is for your highest, most strategic thinking. Totally. Totally. It's so well, crucial. You yeah. know, we have all of these technological advances. We have apps. We have, you know all these things that are supposed to make us more productive. And I think what a lot of it, a lot of it does. And then a lot of it is like very distracting. And I know you, we talked about, you yeah. don't use social media. Like that's probably to save yourself that time and that, that time investment. But what, like how, how have we become more, um, I guess, technologically mm -hmm. advanced and in some ways saved ourselves a lot of times, but it, in some ways I'm sure that that's, that's a distraction too, right? Yeah, th this goes back to energy too, because I think each person, if somebody watching this, if you love social media, stick with it. Don't let me stop you. I noticed I always felt worse when I signed off. Mm. And as I started to audit my own energy and pay attention, I could tell that I just felt worse where yeah. I was falling into compare and despair. Or ah. I was getting really fractured attention because right. I was like, oh, I need to keep up with this stream and these comments and yes, these direct messages. Yes, yes. And so the thing that I was not saying yes to was my deeper work. And that's why, although, I mean, I could have stuck with social media on some level, but I realized that I might not have written a book mm -hmm. if I had done that. Yeah. So for me, the trade-off is pretty clear. Although, what's funny is that this book is launching. I don't even think I've posted on Instagram in years, but my team... I, they love social media. They love Instagram. They love Twitter. So now they're taking over. And to stay in integrity, I don't, I don't ever have anybody ghost post for me. I don't like doing that. But they're, you know, they're putting their initials like Stephanie here, or we're taking over Jenny's Instagram for the launch month. Cool. So I think it, it's two separate things. If anyone runs a business, of your personal predilection for mm -hmm. social media versus maybe you still want the business to have a presence. Yeah, it doesn't have to be you. Yeah. Um, okay, so we went through a line, which is sort of a line, look at your, do an audit of your yeah. time, how you're spending it. Then we talked through design, which is sort of like bucketing things together, designing your day, your week, your month. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit more about sort of sure. the design piece? Yeah, once you are clear, like once you know that something is aligned, again, with your energy, your strengths, your values, design is about being really intentional. What is your ideal outcome from this project or this area? the ideal impact you want it to have, even a conversation like this one. You know, Oprah always talks about how she sets very clear intentions for yes. every single piece of content. Yes. So designing ideal outcome, ideal impact, and then process. Yeah. That before anybody starts on the work or the next version of the work, we're really clear, how do we want to tackle this? What can we automate? How can we streamline this? So that by the time we get to the third stage, assign. Mm -hmm. The process is thoughtful. Yes. It's not just so ad hoc. Yes. And I find, especially for leaders, who I know you're interviewing a ton of yeah. leaders this week, that the assigned stage, at least if we design the process together, mm -hmm. you can have more trust and confidence than passing right. it off. Right, right. So we talked about align. We talked about design. Let's talk about our last step, assign. Yes. This is not going to be news to anyone watching your channel, your stuff, but assign is all about who will do what by when and getting clear on that. Where I think it gets challenging is that leaders, managers, business owners tend to hold on to way too much. Okay. They become the chief everything officer okay. or the all seeing question answer. Mm -hmm. That's one of my challenges when I was early of running my business. I realized that everyone was asking me when they got stuck. Right. So there's this famous HBR article and then it became a book, the one minute manager and the monkey. 
that uh, the parable is that every time a team member has a problem, they bring a monkey on their back. The monkey is the problem or the okay. project. Okay. And they just go, here, manager, I'm stuck. And they leave okay. the monkey on the manager's desk. Right. By the end of the day, the manager is has a zoo. Right. Has a troop of monkeys messing up his office. Mm-hmm. And so the work of a sign is not taking it over and not doing too much and getting right. out of the way. Right. So g- not accepting the monkeys. Yeah. You know, Telling, I tell my team, do not let me be the bottleneck. Mm-hmm. Do not let me stop this process. Mm-hmm. If you don't hear back from me, tell me what you're going to do by when. And if I mess something up because I didn't respond in time, that's on me. That's on me. Yeah. 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 So, and then each of us should be continually trying to work ourselves out of a job. Right. So one of my favorite sections in the assigned stage is the Fiji test. Mm-hmm. I used to get so paranoid, like, what if I got hit by a bus? What would happen? So I didn't want to manifest getting hit by a bus. So I started asking, what if I got whisked to Fiji with no devices and no ability to give notice to my team? Yeah. Could anyone else seamlessly step in and take over? Yeah. And that can go for anyone at any level on the Mm -hmm. team. So with my team, we're always making a habit of documenting the role and how to do things. Okay. Because it does happen. Yeah. People get sick unexpectedly. They have to take care of a family member. Yeah. And it's really challenging to have them leave with all the knowledge only in their head mm-hmm. about how to do their job or work totally. with their clients. Totally. I think that's that makes a ton of sense because you're right. As managers, we do have a tendency to take on too much. Mm-hmm. We I love the parable of the monkey. I mean, yeah. um, keep your own monkeys. Like, right. You know? right. Don't give me your monkey. And then sometimes right. now, sometimes even my husband, he'll say like, oh, whatever happened to that FedEx package? It's like, I don't know. That's your, that's monkey. your monkey. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I can so easily just take these things yes, on. And totally. I just go, I don't know. Or he'll ask me, where did I put this? And I'm like, don't know. Mm-hmm. But it's not my job to find it. Yeah. You know, totally. so even at home, I'm always trying to just be clear of not taking on too many monkeys. Yes. That, that's what leads to burnout. I actually, um, now that you say that, I there's a person on my team, Rowan, who is so good at not giving me her monkeys mm-hmm. and taking them all on herself. And um, it makes me such a better manager to her because mm-hmm. she, I know she's just going to be creative and come up with a solution. And then she and I can focus on like bigger picture, more strategic, Mm -hmm. um, things. She's also one of the most valuable members of my team because she's, she doesn't just come and set the monkey on my desk. Here I'm stuck. Right. Exactly. So I think as a manager, if you can look for people that do that for you, that's, I mean, that's huge. I never even thought of it in that that way. Yeah. And then acknowledging her because maybe she doesn't even realize yes. that that's a skill of hers totally. and that she's doing that and how helpful it is. Right. And, well, hopefully she watches this it, interview. Yeah. And it, <laughs> and it does allow you to be more strategic with yeah. the time that you two have together. Cause, and it is so tempting as a manager or a leader to just step in and solve it. Yes. <gasps> totally. I mean, sometimes I don't think it makes sense to withhold. Like if right. I can just if I can give input quickly and help get somebody unstuck, I don't know, but maybe that's my Achilles heel. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. I, bad I, habit. I, totally. I don't want to just be like, yes, even though I secretly know exactly. Yes, totally. Yeah. yeah. It, I guess you have to bend, like walk that line, right? Yeah. Um, how did you get into writing and becoming an author? I know you said you were at Google for, for a number of years. Like what, what made you say like, you know what? I really want to write about these complex mm. things and really write these frameworks and create this, like you obviously have a gift for it. Your writing style is so beautiful. Um, but like, how'd you get, how did you get into it and make the leap? Yeah, I've always, I actually had a journalism background growing up and I always loved writing, but I'm not that romantic writer that I'm sitting in a cabin in the woods every day. Right. (laughs) I I write when I go through something the hard way and I feel that I struggle with it. And I'm such a bookworm. I will read every book on the subject. And if I read a hundred books and only then achieve some clarity, so just the long, hard way, then I get really passionate about trying to make it easier for the next ah, people who are going to go through whatever okay. that is. So my first book, Life After College, was for college grads. Yeah, I was working in coaching and career development at mm-hmm. Google, saw how many people were hitting their own plateaus. Mm-hmm. Then five years after leaving Google, I wrote Pivot. Okay. That was about navigating change. And my mantra was, if change is the only constant, let's get better at it. Yes. And that was 2016. It came out. And 2020, we know we all got pivoted over and over again. So I had just 
in trying to navigate what was next self-employed, there's no paycheck anymore mm -hmm. to fund the question. Mm -hmm. Who am I? What's right, next? Right. It's easier when you already have a job. Mm -hmm. So then free time, all the same things, like just going through it as a business owner and the stress and pressure mm -hmm. and the uncertainty as, as, as an entrepreneur that's ever present. Yeah, totally. So how, how I, you know, the core question is just how could I ease the pressure for myself and others mm -hmm. and be present. Yeah. I mean, that sounds so cliche because yeah. that's what a lot of the personal development industry is about, but free time to me, it's not really free if our mind is somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's so important. Like, um, she says in the artist's way, attention is connection. And yeah. if you're fra your attention is fragmented, you're not connecting to the people on your team, you're right. not connecting to your business, you're not connecting to whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So yeah. Yeah. And we have this quote, at least in the U S Benjamin Franklin, time is money. Yeah. But it's time isn't money. Like, right. That is even such a capitalist take mm -hmm. on what time is. Mm -hmm. Time is so much more valuable than money. Absolutely. And I say in the book, like time isn't money. It is life force. Yes. It is who we are. Time is like this gets really into the philosophical realm, Heidegger and those guys, but uh, it's just so much more than money. Yeah. It's so much more. And of totally. course, we don't want to always just trade time for money. They no. both have a lot of currency in the world, but we don't get time back. No. So that's why I feel so passionately. And I think a lot of work culture, you know, a lot of the startups that we're celebrating here at South by have a kind of churn and burn vibe. Even if they don't do it intentionally, the pace is so unrelenting, mm -hmm. especially for companies that are in this growth at all cost mindset. Totally. And that's what I, I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> so I free love time it. is also a manifesto of like, I say I don't work full time, I work free time. Yeah. I don't want to work 40 hours a Agreed. week. I think 25 super focus is plenty. I love that. I would love to work 25 super focus hours rather yeah. than 40 fragmented Right. Hours. Or like just, just kind of stretching the time. Like I yes. know what it's like when you work at a company or maybe people and who work for you, desk. just the optics of yes. it. Like let me just sit at my desk, even though I could have just gone for a workout yeah. and feel so much better yes. and work five compressed hours mm -hmm. instead of just the face time of like being at your desk for mm -hmm. a certain window. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, has mm -hmm. you wrote this book that's called like the tagline is lose the busy work, love your business. Do you yeah. feel like you like love your business again? Hey, that's such a funny question. Yes. I am at a current point with the book launching and I had a key team member leave. So the irony of writing any book at all is that the universe is always going to test the author <laughs> to say, are you sure? Are you sure you're an expert in this? You know, and so th there was a conversation today. Somebody asked Mark Cuban if he ever has imposter syndrome. And he said, F yes, all the friggin' time, all the time, even Mark Cuban. And so, yes, I feel at a really good point with my business. It's also at the edge of my comfort zone yeah. because there's so much going on. I've expanded the team mm -hmm. to a big enough size. But that's kind of where I like it. Yeah. I mean, even me, Hajik sent me high. He wrote a book called Flow that we find a flow state at the intersection of just enough challenge and just enough skill. Mm. And I would say I'm right there. Okay. And if it tips just past our level of skill to handle the challenge, that's where we get into overwhelm Got and it. stress and anxiety. Okay. So with the book launch, yeah, there's yes. so much happening. Oh my gosh. But I feel very passionately about the work itself and business building. I feel like there's just no there there. Yeah. It's, it's always evolving. And with the dynamics of the last few years, I mean, I lost 80% of my income in two weeks. Wow. Just one fell swoop. All my speaking gigs were canceled. Right. And that's, I'm fortunate. Right. Like of, of anything that could have happened, that was even among the more sure. fortunate, but it was still quite shocking. Yeah. So it's been a journey the last yeah, few years. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, people have realized, like, I don't know if there's the mortality, facing the mortality piece of it or what it is, but it's like, you really have realized that time is short. It's mm. super valuable. I don't want to be like you see with the great resignation. I don't want to be doing right. this job anymore. It sucks. You're working me too hard. You know, fuck this. Like yeah, people right. are just like, you know, over it. So I think that something mm. like this that can help people to really figure out how to be in a flow mm. state is, um, it's just really valuable right now. I'm curious how you navigate that Yeah, with, for either for your own energy, how it flows within the scope of work that you do, or mm -hmm. even how you manage your team. 
Um, just like energy wise, time wise. Yeah, either yeah. any of the above. Yeah. Like kind of how you think about, because I know working within a company, it's not always easy. Even yeah. your team members might come yeah. to you and have certain conversations, yeah. especially now with everybody totally. rethinking and reimagining so totally, much. Totally, totally. Um, I think that I try to keep it goal oriented. Mm-hmm. And so here's the overarching goals we'd like to achieve whether it's having a successful South by Southwest, Mm -hmm. whether it's growing our social channels by whatever. And then I don't get as caught up in the minutia, the details of how it's done. It's just like, we're, if we're all on the same page that we're going, here's where the ball's going. Um, and the ball gets there. I kind of get less worried about the details of how the ball got there. If that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and if, if people, I'm pretty open to as a manager, like if people want to take, time for you know to take that workout class in the middle of the day or they want to go like that's that okay that's for your own mental health that's for your own wellness your own well-being and if that's going to make you if we you could compress that day Mm. into some really productive time some really thoughtful time um you know i also think that it's really important to have some more strategic projects and then some more of the in the weeds so i try to tell my team to have a certain set of work that you're working on that's a a multi-week timeline Mm. so that you're not just caught up playing whack-a-mole all the time. Right, right. I feel like, I don't know about you, but my entire job could be email and that'd be the only thing I ever did was just answer email. I could probably answer email for 40 hours a week if I wanted wanted to, to, which I don't. (laughs) Right, exactly, exactly. But reacting, just reacting could be a full-time job. Yes. Exactly. And who wants to live their life in a reactionary state all the no. time? Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm with you. Well, thank you so much, Jenny, so for joining me. Thanks. I think that this book is awesome. It's called thank Free you. Time. It comes out in two weeks. Yes. March 22nd. March 22nd. 2022. Lose the busy work. Love your business, Jenny Blake. I think this is so awesome. And I'm really, thank really you. appreciative of you coming. Me too. So thank, thank you. you. There's a whole chapter on serendipity popcorn. So meeting you, sitting next to each other on the plane, that's was just all the message I needed. I love it. So yeah, that's awesome. Great to be here. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you. Thank everybody for watching. Yes. Thank you guys.